and, and Rich, you must just miss her so much. I miss her so yeah. much. Even I was just looking at those photographs and it just, it breaks my heart actually. Yeah. Um, and, but what we did together was we put cancer on prime time. You did, <laughs> you really did. And I'm, I'm so proud to have done that with mm. her actually. Um, and her legacy and what we started, mm. we're going to carry on with it. Which is fantastic. So the podcast continues, yeah. her work continues. It's, yeah. it's, it's a great legacy for her, it really is. Absolutely. What I love about it is it's funny, <laughs> it's hugely honest, I mean really, really yeah. honest, which it has to be, but also I really like the fact that you say, look, you're living with cancer. Yeah. You're not fighting it. No. It's not a battle. You're living with it or trying yeah. to. And it really annoys me that kind of that idea that you have to fight your cancer. Yeah, yeah. And I think Rach is a, a prime example of this. She was the most positive, upbeat, yeah. healthy person that I can think of. Um, and yet she died because of cancer. And I have stage four cancer. That means that I have cancer that's spread from my bowel. Originally, I have bowel cancer. It went to my lungs. Um, and I just had cyber knife treatment last week. The cyber knife treatment. Cyber knife amazing, treatment. Isn't it's it? incredible. So it's I'm undergoing all this treatment, mm. but I'm still living with cancer. I don't have a choice. I can't run away and hide. No, no, of course you can't. I have can. to just get on with my of life. Of course you can't. And talking about the podcast <laughs> being honest, this book, F.U. Cancer. F.U. Cancer. F.U. Cancer, which I think is a brilliant title. Thank this you. is so funny and so honest. And you, <laughs> know, you learn so much, though. It's really, really good. Thank you. You should be so, so proud of yourself. Thank you. You've even got your kids in here. They've, they've written Absolutely. a bit as well. Yeah, so I wrote a book because I wanted to... I wanted to write something for, you know, when your friend's being diagnosed with yeah. cancer or, or you've been diagnosed. I wanted to share the, the kind of inner secrets about yes. what it's really like and to tell people, you know what, it's OK not to be OK. Exactly. And I think that's the key thing. And, and also not to be a little bit like you must uh, eat turmeric or and you must do this. Actually mm. to say, you know what, do whatever feels right. And if you want to have a glass of wine, have a glass of wine right. and live with cancer. Yeah. And and I wanted to kind of show people that you can do that. You mm. know, I wear lipstick and heels and, you know, I'm and still there. You look amazing. <laughs> I mean, it's thank you. you. Never in a million years would you know there was anything wrong with Oh, you. thank you. It's, it's remarkable. But you know, the, the thing is, is that I wrote this not thinking that I would be alive to see it in print. Wow. And I wrote it when I was undergoing kind of probably some of my darkest days. I wrote it about nine months ago and I'd just been moved on to third line chemotherapy. Mm. I woke up from an operation to find a, an email suggesting that I came for a meeting about writing a book. And I actually thought, no, that's something I'm going to do in the future. Mm. And I woke up from that operation with a collapsed lung in a kind of high intensity and realised that there might not be a future. And so I just started writing and I started writing in a hospital um, and I wrote, you know, pretty much all the book nine months ago when I was in the dark depths of kind of chemotherapy and I honestly didn't think that I would be here today. Be here and it's so emotional to see that. I bet actually. it is. It must be incredibly <laughs> emotional and especially because, I mean, you know, you've got kids and you have to tell them and yeah. that's really hard. But you did it in a really... If there's a positive way of doing it, you really did. Yeah, thank you. And I got them, as you said, I, I got them to write for the book because I just thought, actually, um, I want to hear... Or other people might want to hear, actually, how I am with my children. For sure. And it doesn't mean they have to do that in the same way. Mm. Um, and I don't, you know, I, I, I just advocate doing whatever feels right for you. Um, and I think that's what we talk about. I talk about it in the book and we talk yeah. about that in the podcast. You know, cancer is so personal. One mm. person might want to get up and fight their cancer or they, you know what, they might just want to run away and cry. Yes. And you know what, if you're going to have a bad day, have a bad day, mm. wipe your tears. And as Rachel said, I think we heard um, <laughs> her know. kind of um, talking, talking me uh, kind of yeah, like yeah. onwards with my journey. She basically said, you know, you wipe your tears and you get on with it. Because what else can you do? What else can you do? And I think you have to, you have to laugh, otherwise you're going to cry, even mm. in the darkest of times. So you make the most of the hand that you've been dealt. Um, and you kind of, you hope that by doing so, you can help other people. Writing this has helped me. Yeah. Um, and I hope that it helps others as well. Oh, it definitely will. It really will, Deborah, because it's, um, it's helped me already. You know I mean, <laughs> it really you. has. No, it's great. And it gives you an idea of what you should, because people sometimes don't know what to say no. to somebody who's got cancer. And they, they say mm. the wrong thing and they, they yeah. don't mean to, and then it, it, it's just, it's awkward. But this has got some great advice for that, about that. Yeah, it has some really practical advice yeah. as well. I hope it's top tips and you can just pick it up <laughs> and, and take it away and have a good laugh with it as well.